Hello and welcome. He's back. Uh oh. Joe Palo, Mike Craig, and no dogs today. No uh, dogs but I'm back today. for about a month, and then I'm I'm gone for good. It's going to be a sad day. But I want to say, Hello. well, from for me. <laughs> but I want to say, what a great, great guy to fill in. I'm. He needs a job from now on. Brett White did right. last week. Brett White for sitting in. Brett did a great job. Two weeks he did. Two weeks he did. We have got to roll quickly, and this was Bradley Cleveland rivalry week. I'm telling you. You don't want to talk about me leaving? Not real. Not yet. We haven't got break time. You're going to make everybody mad. To break you up? Is it break you up? Make you cry? I'm hurt. <laughs> Bradley Cleveland, and of course the wrestling match. It was big enough to get a back page right. ad. It was big enough to have a lot of talk the back and forth. It was a live streaming around the world, and it was Bradley and Cleveland. 3,000 people there, the biggest gate they've had, but basketball, whatever. I mean, it's basketball crowd. That's right. how large it was. It went to the Raptors. We're going to show you some of that. Let's get started right now. We'll get to the basketball after the wrestling. Here we go. This is uh, Cleveland warming up, and Bradley has a new spotlight now, and they shut off the lights and stuff, and there, there it is right there. Uh, we got the, I hope we got the mats up there. You hear that in the background. But There's the crowd the bar. It was unbelievable. The atmosphere. We had people coming from Chattanooga to the other area schools, the Baylors, the McCauley's, at Notre Dame's, all that came and watched that and said they had never been to a wrestling match with the atmosphere that this one had. And these are people that follow wrestling and they have their own rivalries and stuff going. But it was amazing. The pre-match buildup expected to be extremely close. A lot of the close ones went to, uh, as we see, we'll see here in a minute in favor of the Bears, but my goodness, what a what a turnout! And listen to that crowd. That was a Bradley ex-wrestler, David Clark. The man can sing. I'm telling you, he he does a lot of the Bradley matches. He and, was lip syncing. That was me no, singing. It was good. That, that was, was me, and he was lip syncing for it. All right, here we go. First match. Uh, Cleveland's normal 112, not in disciplinary actions. It would cost him. Kelby McAllister gets a Bradley crowd fired up immediately as you watch this 112-pound bout. He's going to get a pin in 30 seconds. Bradley off with a roar and rolling. As you see, Kelby McAllister at 112. This is Taylor Sperlin. And again, Taylor Sperlin coming in doing a backup role. It was a last minute, unexpected thing. But uh, Kelby McAllister right here, watch the crowd get into this. You can hear the crowd in the background. Six to zero, Bradley off to a fast start. Then the match everybody was waiting for was gonna be uh, Logan Biddy and Josh Jadaburson, number one and number two in the state. And it was a pretty good match, although Jada Bursin did, as you see, get the first takedown, controlled the match, uh, most of the match. Biddy had a couple flurries in there, but Jada Bursin, now the rumor of Jada Bursin is that he is going to go down to 112, so opening it up, so we still could have two state champions between these two kids, one at 112, which would be Jada Bursin, and one at 119, which would be Biddy. But right now, Bradley's Biddy on bottom there is going to end up uh, dropping an 8-3 decision to Josh Jadaburson. But uh, listen to the crowd here. I'll tell you, this thing was as good as you'll see in a wrestling atmosphere. If you want to, the copy of this, you can go watch this anytime on ClevelandWrestlingTV.com. ClevelandWrestlingTV.com. If you did not know it, you can watch any of these. There's Biddy coming around. Almost a score. Look at this flurry. I mean, these are, these are two good guys to come through like this, and, and, and Jadaburson finally will get control there. But... Uh, that's good wrestling right there, folks. If guys know what to do when they get in certain situations. Jada Bursing had a severe cut from a, a knee to the head earlier in the week in practice. You can see he's wrapped up there. Seemed to run out of gas a little bit towards the end of the match, and, and uh, uh, Biddy came on. But uh, we don't know if we're going to see a rematch of that or not. There's Biddy scoring, as we said, towards the end. Jada Bursing walks away with an 8-3 win. Six to three, your team score. Moving on to what was uh, thought to be a toss-up match, Eddie Styles of Bradley and Ben Spires of Cleveland. Well, toss-up it was not, as uh, you'll watch here. Styles will take control of this and not only get a decision, he will end up with a major decision. So extra team points for Bradley on the team score. And this is one that uh, most uh, pundits, which don't always know what they're talking about, but thought they did. They thought this was going to go either way. Styles, however, in control of the match. Look, he get the cradle. Bringing the uh, Cleveland wrestler Spires to his back there, scoring some back points. But notice the noise in the background. 
Joe, we, we, we panned it on the actual uh, video streaming. It, they were in actually the top rafters on the uh, Bradley side, and Cleveland's crowd filled up the other side. I mean, it was great support. One thing I'd like to say, sportsmanship, unbelievable. All the pre-match hype, all the talk that goes back and forth. When it came down to it, both sets of fans, there wasn't any incidents anywhere, nothing but good hard wrestling. Got to credit everybody for that. Trevor Heron at 130, Jacob Sewell as well for Cleveland. This was another match that people thought would go either direction. Nobody could say, hey, I can bet the house on this one. It was supposed to be a toss-up. However, Heron of Bradley again comes away, and Bradley not only will get the decision here, but as you see, Sewell will score right there. But Heron will come back and actually get a major decision. So another extra team point for the Bears on this match here as uh, Trevor Heron, he moved in from Ringgold two years ago. His nickname is Ringgold. That makes sense, doesn't it, Jack? It does. Yeah, it does. But uh, Heron would uh, come up with a win for Bradley then at the 130-pound match. So uh, the team score after Styles matches 10-3 after the match here with uh, Heron and Sewell, it will be 14-3. So Bradley now, uh, other than the match with Janet Burson, having swept it up to this point, and uh, Cleveland crowd not able to get into it. Some of that is where you start. They started, they drew and started at 112. As you see, uh, again, Heron, this score was 17 to seven, so there's a lot of points both sides right there. Sewell's gonna get that takedown. Heron is gonna come out the back and get two on the reversal. And there he posts up. Once he posts, he's got Sewell in some trouble. And towards the end of the match, it was just a decision. The coaches were trying to get Heron to cut him, but he will eventually uh, try to get a cradle. Here it is. So he gets enough points in to provide the major. So again, another lift for Bradley at that point. Next match, Bradley's uh, David Graham coming up, number one ranked in the state. And uh, Bradley expected, I think, six here. Graham uh, versus Cleveland's Clay Bunch. Bunch ended up getting, uh, uh, actually saving the team a point, but Graham will control this match, but it will be a technical fall. So in the technical fall, uh, Graham will get five points, but we're gonna show Graham in action. Nice fireman's with a dump right there. Controls the arm, able to score some back right here off of that. So David Graham showing a state championship form, trying to come back and get a second one this year. Favored to do so at 135 right now. He's gonna probably be 130 by the time the state tournament starts. But uh, there's your technical fall, David Graham, a winner. So now you're looking at a 19 to three match. Here was a very hotly contested match, one of the closest matches of the evening. This is Bailey Jones, of course, uh, a sponsor of the streaming video and a lot of the local TV, uh, Alan Jones, it's his son. And Bailey Jones going at it with Chris Aguilar, Aguilar with the early lead, jumping out, uh, I believe, to a four to one lead, but Jones coming back. So Jones versus Aguilar, and again, this was the, probably the best contested match as far as the closeness of the match and the score, but Jones picking up two right there. And it'll come down to this takedown. It's tied now, match tied at 5-5. Five, five. Jones right here is gonna get the takedown. So Jones will take a seven to five lead. That'll be enough for him to hang on and win. Jones picks up the victory right there in a great match at 140. Moving on to 145, the man who fills out a single, that's what we call Dean Pavley, state champion from last year. He is a horse and a half, tough to handle. He just does what he wants when he gets out there on the mat. Pavlou versus Will Moreland. Pavlou, a returning state champ, taking care of business pretty early and often, but uh, Bradley again, only getting five here on a tech fall. Thought they might get six for the pin. Will those points matter even more when they meet a second time for the region dual title? Because they will, folks, be added again as one and two in the region. But Dean Pavley, of course, having total dominance right here, returning state champ, number one in the state at the 145-pound weight class. And Pavley not getting the pin right there. A little controversy. Bradley thought they had six, did not get the pin. But uh, regardless, a five-point score for Pavley, Bradley up 24 to six. Moving on to Josh Disney and Travis Leonard. At the time, number three, Disney, number five, Leonard in the state. And uh, Cleveland uh, beforehand, I believe, thought this was a match they were gonna be able to get. And uh, turned out to be a pretty good match as it went on. But early on, Disney 
Scoring a big uh, four-point early lead. Gets a takedown, gets a back points, five-point early lead, I should say. Two takedown, three back, close to a pin right there. Doesn't get it. Give Leonard credit for the fight. Leonard comes off his back. That will then turn into a, two points by Leonard. But uh, back and forth they will go. And again, in one of the matches that thought to be a toss-up, maybe favored by Cleveland, Disney will start to take control now. He will score a major decision for Bradley in what thought was thought by many possibly to be Cleveland's match. So Disney under control. He will score four on the team points for the Bears. And uh, you'll see Leonard get a late takedown right there. But 28 to 6 would be your score as Leonard gets a couple takedowns. But Disney again late in the match will come back and seal the major score of 19 to 9 and the victory for Bradley. Matt Watson, number two, Harold Gage, number three, right here at 160. This could be a state championship traditional final preview. These two guys have been ranked in the top three all year long, and Watson takes a one to zero lead for Bradley. Gage is going to tie it up here at one to one, and that's really all the scoring they had. They had a lot of going back and forth. Watts, uh, Gage pressing the pace, Watson getting called for stalling right there. So Watson gets a one-point penalty with just 20-some seconds to go in the match. Gage, gonna, just all he's got to do is hold him off. Watson trying to score. Gage wins 2-1, to one, virtue of the penalty right there. So we got a preview of another one to come right there. Two great guys at 160. 171, Jacob Howard and Matt Sharp. This match was even early. It was tied, but eventually Sharp will go up 4 to nothing, and I believe uh, it ends up being 4-4. Four to four with Bradley's Howard tying it up, but eventually Sharp would get the edge, not only the edge, the big edge, give Cleveland a lift after the gauge win and put, put the score at 28 to nine. Sharp gives Cleveland a little hope here. It's one of the few hopes they had in the evening. Sharp's gonna get a pin unexpectedly there. Catch, caught uh, uh, Logan right there with, or Jacob Howard with the stick, and that would put the score at 29 to 15 but it would not get any closer right here. Another match, Cleveland thought they'd get, look right off the bat like they would, take down, call it a slam. Referee said that Chip Norwood did not have control of Tucker Bolton in the 189 pound match. Norwood gets penalized one, so Bolton up one to nothing. But after that, Bolton, even though he got the takedown early, starts to take control of the match. A freshman versus sophomore here. And this is another match that so who knows how it'll go next time around. But in this match, in this time, Bolton even getting back points there. So the freshman surprisingly uh, taking it to Chip Norwood right here of Cleveland. There's Norwood getting a score, but this, it would be a decision, but a nine to three decision for Bradley. And so several of these matches that were tossed up as we mentioned, they all went Bradley's way. Some of those turned the next time around could be a lot closer. But at this point, now it is 32 to 15. And Blake Higgins now and Max O'Forey. This was another match uh, that was just uh, two escapes. They did both score one off bottom. And there again is a stall. You can't jump on the guy. You've either got to release him or take him back to the mat. After a warning, you get a warning and then uh, you, you get the stall point later. So that put Higgins up, or tied the match at 1 1. Then O'Forey, so as not to get another penalty, cuts Higgins. Higgins leads 2 1. O'Forey trying to score at the end of the match. Higgins at 215 and another toss up goes, goes Bradley's way. Two to one your score there. To the heavyweight match, Cody Epperson, just a sophomore. Adam Peters finished third in Georgia last year. Uh, supposed to dominate this match, but early on, Epperson two is back, but Peters would, uh, Adam Peters would recover and then uh, start taking control after being down in the first period. He would come back and get, get some uh, back points but would end up with a major 12 to four. That makes your score 35 to 19 after, you'll, after this match concludes with Peters of Cleveland now in the heavyweight bout. And then now we got the next most anticipated match right here. This was uh, number th uh, three, Ethan Haynes for Bradley, number five, Alvarado, who is a junior for Cleveland. Alvarado, one of the most improved Haynes, just a freshman. Reminds you of a little Sean Cordell. But, uh, um, Cleveland kind of thought they could get this, but nothing doing. Haynes, the freshman, comes in and surprisingly dominating from start to finish here, getting a lot of back points. So the freshman steps up big for Bradley. A lot of people were really thinking, hey, this is a total coin flip. 
right here, though. Hames is going to catch him high in legs, gets him to the back, close to a pin, doesn't get it, but the freshman controls the match throughout as number three versus number five, and uh, could be another state title preview right here, but Ethan Hames, uh, uh, a lot more polished at that stage of people thought, lights back on as that's the last match, 38 to 19, your score. Great sportsmanship, as I said, with all the pre-hype, there's Bradley hanging on to the Bradley Cleveland Traveling Trophy, which has not traveled for quite some time. Uh, and Bradley extends the 110 game home, winning, home win streak right there to 111. So some amazing streaks. A lot of pre-hype, but let's just, uh, let's just say great match, great sportsmanship. I'm just glad that everybody came there to wrestle and they took care of business on both ends. And uh, both coaches, uh, obviously class guys, class coaches. Well, before the match, a lot of people would have thought it could have gone the other way. It, it was predicted to go either way, the whole thing. But Bradley did take it to him, and uh, we'll see. Another match coming up January Library. 25th in the duels. And we got some more Cleveland Bradley coming right at you. Oh, yeah. We're not done. Back. Check into cash. Check into cash truly is about helping people. As a parent, you should never feel awkward about needing some extra money because something's gonna happen. If you got those teenagers, now you're gonna have to get a car. Well, there's car insurance, and that's not cheap. My favorite customer reminds me of my grandmother, and every time she comes into the center, I have to walk around the counter and give her a hug. That's what checking the cash is for, just for that crunch time in between paydays. My name's Victoria Wyatt, and I've worked for checking the cash for 12 years. My favorite part of working with Check Into Cash is knowing that every day I'm going to help somebody in some way. I'm very involved in my son's school in the community. Um, I try to do as much as I can with his class. Come into Check Into Cash and I will be glad to help you. My name is Latoya Dennison and I've been with Check Into Cash for six wonderful years. Hey, we do. Check it to cash. Get up to $200 by calling the number on your screen. Always use payday advances responsibly. Okay. More Bradley Cleveland stuff. Oh, man. Basketball. Just huh? a week of it. Basketball, girls and boys. It. I got it. Here we go. Bradley Central Cleveland. This is the girls' game. This is first basket of the game. It's Rachel Eisen Rage. for Rachel. three. It's right there. All right. Good job. Cleveland goes up five to nothing on this uh, Riley Biggs shot. And she would be Biggs. Big tonight. shot, huh? Yeah, Big shot. Right. Yeah. Inside for the Barretts, it's Lasuela Person. Hey, Captain Lasuela. And she got a good shot right there. Good job. All right, we move on. Michelle Davis. You'll see. Turn around, Jay. And we got here. This is the steal off the inbounds pass. This is Burtnett hitting Isom. The break. Looking good. Katie Davis now would hit a jumper for the Barretts. All right. All right, here we go. And you can't see her, but Michelle Davis would hit one here. Trust me. How do I know it's her? I well, catch her on the way back do, down the do. floor. There right, she is. This is Haley Irvin as well, taking it to, to the hoop. Right. Taking it to the hoop, taking it to the hoop. All right, Irvin again uh, nails a three-point uh, bucket, and you'll see way outside. Good shot. All right, this is Katie Davis. Three right here for all. Puts uh, Bradley Central up by one. And just seconds ago, Bradley Center would steal the ball. Look at the three-quarter shot, a Check court shot out. from McCracken Corn, and she didn't care. Look at this. Look at this. Right. See Look where she's at. This. You got to see it again. We got to show it again. 16 to 11. Bradley Center would be in the lead. I'm going to oh, slow mo it. Slow mo it. Oh, that yeah, ought to be good to with all the little yeah, with all the technology interference. I with all the I have technology. <laughs> Check this slow mo here. Look at the hey, crowd. What are you going to do? Wait a minute. Watch what are you going to do? Watch the technology. Here. Right, here we go. There it is. Right there. Boom. Boom. All right, that's look, okay. Though. But look, 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 look. He can slop, oh, stop, slop, gosh. and roll. Good shot Wait. right there. She makes it every time. The camera lady to call all that. <laughs> and here it is again. Uh, with this time not in slow mo, right. but every time she makes it, that should be six points right there. That's right. Second quarter, Casey Burnett would hit. Uh, Check those two dudes coming oh, yeah. down. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Uh, inside, <laughs> right there. That's Casey Burnett, and then Michelle Davis. Uh, tallying two more for Cleveland, and they would be up 20 to 16. All right, and three-point shot, uh, basket by Bowles, Lace. Lacey Bowles. Isom would answer with a three of her own, and there you go. And then it's Michelle Davis once again. You think I'm kidding? No, right there. Isom uh, streaks in the paint, gets the bounce. Yes. Right there, up and in. Ooh. Lady Raiders up 28-20 at the half. And you'll see by the scoreboard uh, right there. 
Here we go. We move on. Third quarter, first blood. It's a three by Katie Davis for Bradley Central. Nice move to get a shot here, Michelle Davis. Look at this. Up and in. And then on the break for the Lady Raiders, it's Isom. She's got Isom in her in her bone in her going that through her veins. Morgan Isom. Right Morgan, there. right. Yeah. The steal and breakaway. The layup here. This is Eldridge. You'll see. Kelly. Kelly. And then the other Isom, the Rachel one. Yeah. On the loose. Raging Rachel Isom. Isom again. A three with 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Way outside there. Now just uh, a few seconds left. She nails a buzzer shot. Cleveland would be up 39 to 29. And we move on to the fourth quarter now. The lead would be cut to seven as the first to see the scoreboard as McCracken Corn and I don't care and she hits a three. And then Eldridge drives two more. Oh my goodness. Inside four point game now 41 to 37. Cleveland calls a timeout and they decide to freeze the ball. Now this I don't like it because the ball is ice cold Bradley's after forced this. To foul there. So they're, they're forced to foul. There's 40 seconds left. Biggs would hit two free throws. Ball's ice cold. You know, you put it in the freezer for a little freeze. bit. Davis would add two on the inbound play. And then 15 seconds left. Eldridge would hit a free throw. Isom hits two with five seconds left. We count you down. Uh, Isom would hit two with five seconds left. Final score would be 47 38. The, uh, Lady, the Raiders. Lady Raiders beat the Bradley Central Barretts. All right. And then we're going to move is. on to the boys' game as you see things go down the court. The ball's frozen. Now Here we go. go. Cleveland starts out. It's the swish. It's the swish with a three right there. Breaking for two and hauling in a lay long pass. And laying it up. He's used to that on the football field. That's it first. first. Once again, fast break. Atkins, good shot right there. Timeout, Bradley Central, and Coach Smith. Not that. How can you tell? Just, just kidding. Oh, ooh, that ooh, ooh, ooh. He's in, he's I'm in glad I'm not that He's in the face. All right. And then time out here. Another fast break. It's 10 zip Cleveland. Finally, Bradley Central would get a basket there it is. by Ryan Knight, and it's a three. Sanders, another nice jumper. Nice Jay right there. Down low, it's Hobbs for Bradley Central. Off balance shot, a three by Watson Horner. And then we've got a three by Matt Hawkins of Bradley Central. Second quarter now. All right, let's get Matt. Oh, let's get Matt in there. there. Second quarter, and Bradley Central is going to be down 17 to 12. But Knight would nail another three. It's 17 15 now. Bradley uh, Central trailing 17 16. They get a bucket by Perkins, and Bradley Central would lead by one. After being down 10 0. Yeah. A steal and a breakaway. Parks gives Cleveland the lead back. There it is. All right, and then we've got uh, we'll watch the body control here underneath Cagle, Dipsy Doodle, Perkins now hits uh, a three for Bradley Central, Sanders on the move. There he goes. 27-22. Now you'll see Cleveland would be up at the half. You'll see by the scoreboard after Sanders makes Sanders that, had a big game. Makes that shot big. right there. 27-22. Third quarter now. First blood. It's Sanders again. It's the swish. And then Hawkins would be injured yeah, he here. He gets hurt. He look, he's Ball down. is stolen. Eventual basket by Terrell Parks. Hawkins still down. okay. And he will join the game a little bit later on. But they did. It was thought it was something broken there for a minute because he acts like he couldn't move his arm on a bad stinger. But uh, lay there. Came back. Came back. Here we go. Perkins uh, loses his man. Gets two. It's a five-point game. But. Parks answers on the other end. And then King would score inside for Cleveland. And then a basket by Donlin. Good shot. Right here. Up and in. Nice work underneath. Basket by Davis. Look at this shot. Oh my goodness. Horner lays it in for two of his own. Here comes Horner. In the corner. In the corner. And he's not, he's not a plump pie. It's, he's just making two points right there. Three-point basket by Sanders. Once again, good shot. It's Hobbs now inside for Bradley Central. The Bowers. And uh, there it is. Sanders with yet another three. Sanders is going to take over, Coach. Right here. Sanders, again, another basket. And a foul. He gets fouled right here as he makes the shot. Sanders, nine straight, makes it 51-38 after three. 
right here. This right here. After three. Now we're gonna move on to the fourth quarter. First, we got a little, we gotta see the score. Fourth quarter, this is Bradley Central getting first blood. First quarter, it's Donlin once again, and then Monty, 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 Scott and corner. Answers with a nice jumper of his own. Perkins now drives the lane for Bradley Central. Up and in, good for two. And then Donlin once again. You can't stop him. You can't. Inside, looking good. Parks would answer with a three. Look at him, just take his time and nails it. Trust me, it went through the net. And then Sanders with a nice move. He had him all night long. Atkins for two inside. And then Donlin, another good shot. Another three here for Bradley Central. Good follow through. Run. Reminds me a lot of his dad. Maybe his mom. His dad never could shoot like that. And then Parks gets it uh, over the big men right there. Then Perkins would drive. Inside for two, Sanders responds, as in ish, swish, Sanders, in. And then uh, Perkins would get another three, Parks all alone, all by his. So right there, in. Final score would be 70-51, Cleveland completes the sweep, girls, boys, it's all happening right there. Big win for, uh, another big win for Cleveland. Another big win for the Raiders as they complete the sweep, as you say, so the Raiders sweep there, Boys, uh, the wrestling, Valley takes the wrestling, and we've got more action on all that to come. Plus, Walker Valley we throwing do, in the mix do. with all. With we got a good, good thing coming up here. Right we sure thing. do. Local boy making good. Not only uh, that, uh, we knew he was good from around here, but he, he's starting to make noise around the country. We'll be right back with a nice little piece on a certain person from B.C. Yeah. Dear Lisa, all my love, Johnny. Dear Belinda, all my love. Johnny. Oh, Buying two dozen roses is expensive. What's your name? Janine. Buying three? You ain't eating thick burgers for a week. Dear Janine. Double cheeseburgers. Two for three bucks at Hardee's. All right. Welcome. Those look good. Those look good. Local boy making some uh, national news. I tell you what, uh, uh, Terrence Oglesby, a lot of question marks about whether or not he was going to be able to play big time college ball. I think those are. I questions think those are answered. Answer. The guy can shoot. We, ESPN did a little piece. We we just copied it off ESPN. We're showing it to you right now. Terrence don't care. Oglesby, college Copy. basketball, number 19, Clemson on the road facing Alabama. First meeting since 1989. Here's Terrence Oglesby. He might rise up and shoot it from there. He thinks that anything within the building is in his range. There you go, right on cue. Oh, my! <laughs> yep, that's pretty deep. Three threes in the first half. Clemson up five at the break. Second half, full court pressure. Leads to more Terrence Oglesby. But look at him. Give it to me. I'm behind the line. Five threes for 17 points. That's moving without the ball. Clemson wins 87-61. Hmm. All right, unbelievable. Uh, quickly, before we close here, uh, congratulations, Terrence. But I did hear Larry Brown, there are a lot of pro coaches in the in the uh, stands for that North Carolina game. Larry Brown said, who is that kid and why don't I know about him? So he's actually getting some attention to some big-time people. Whether or not he'll get that far, who knows, but making a splash yeah, in college. Making a splash Everything I taught him, he's doing quite well, Mike. Congrats, Terrence. Well. We'll see you next week again on Sports Vision. Just keep listening to me. <laughs>